So why don't, why don't you guys uh, go ahead and tell everybody uh, who you guys are and what you're about. So I'm Dean and this is my wife, Carol, and uh, we joined Lifestyles back in February of 2020. So um, it's been a while since we joined and we joined by, well, it was me. I've been listening to Dell on the radio for years and I'm one of the Dave Ramsey guys too. And I was like, that, you know, that can't work, that can't work. And then finally, like that year, I was like, well, let's, we need something we can do together. So what do you think about this? And, she's, and she got excited. So, and then that was history from there. We went through the seminar and everything. So, so and I say, it says I'm a United flight attendant, but I'm actually a retired Continental Airlines flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. some loyalties there, yeah. Um, it's, it makes a difference. So you guys didn't, you guys had no real estate experience or a little bit or nothing? No, yet? none at all. Awesome. So we did the freedom, what's it, the free, financial freedom mm -hmm. the weekends, I guess at the first of the year last year, right, pretty much right before the pandemic. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so expand a little bit. So you said that you, you listened to uh, Dell for about eight years and uh, it was a simple discussion and Carol got on board immediately and all of a sudden you guys were excited to get get moving. Yes, pretty much after that weekend seminar, uh, Dale actually led that one and, and we joined that weekend. <laughs> Made a lot of sense from that typical. Uh, yes, you guys were happy because right after yeah. your seminar, we had a pandemic and then I started teaching. So you got to be taught by the best. Not the mediocre <laughs> guys. <laughs> yeah, it was good. So yeah, so you, you, the timing is kind of interesting for you guys because you guys joined right at the beginning of the pandemic. Right. So, right. Yes. You got, to, you got to see all that unfold. So good job on that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in to. I, I know that we don't have a lot of uh, pictures on the uh, property, but just uh, tell us a little bit about the property, where it is, and what kind of rehab you were you were looking at. And, uh, any surprises? So, well, so we wanted to, to get a property close to us up north and we're in the Kingwood area. So we wanted, you know, something close and this popped up on the, the blast and it came from Jeff Johnson, Jenkins. Jenkins, excuse me, Jeff Jenkins. And it was in Kingwood. So we immediately said, we're interested. And we popped over and looked, went to go look at it. Well, while we were walking through it, there was a foundation. It had foundation repair. Um, it was it wasn't in the best of shape. You can see in the background there. It had a mirror on the wall, so almost original stuff in the house. It even had a pull out um, ironing board area that was removed. So, um, but we, you know, we tagged it. We were number two, and we said we would take it. And Jeff said, "You got it." So, yeah, I found this interesting because this property is right around the corner from me, and I remember joking with you. It's like it's like when I, when I discovered it was a one-story home going for that price, I realized that someone's going to make out really well on this one. Yeah. So, uh, so let's go let's go over the numbers real quick. So it appraised at 260, and I don't think that was the first number going into this. What what was the initial number that we thought that it was going to appraise? I think it was we were thinking it was about 220, 230 is what we thought it would come in at. Yeah, and and I thought that was reasonable until I found out it was one story because I know that one stories around here go for a premium. And I said, okay, we're going to be in for a good surprise here. Yeah. So it appraised at 260. The purchase price was 197. Uh, initial equity was 63,000. We have 24,000. So just like Swar up, it wasn't a huge, uh, yeah. huge rehab, you know, relative to the medians that we're seeing uh, yeah. in the Houston area. The closing cost, again, it was in the $11,000 range for two closings. You had a net equity capture of 20, a little over $27,000. Cash out of pocket, thirty-four thousand. Return on capital gain, eighty percent. Meaning that you got eighty percent of the cash. You got you got your initial cash out of pocket uh, back, and then you got uh, an additional. Uh, no, I'm sorry. You just got the the twenty-seven, eighty percent of your cash out of pocket. So um, you got your rent at two thousand dollars a month, yielding a cash flow of five seventeen, and your cash on cash return of eighteen percent. And so th this is real reflective of uh, the median opportunity that we're seeing in the Houston market uh, mm -hmm. you know, that we track. So good job on this. It, 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 you, can get, you can get where you need to be getting these kind of returns 
on a regular basis. Is there mm -hmm. anything you want to add about about this uh, about the numbers or how, what any surprises that showed up for you? Sure. So on the the quest that we got from Jeff originally, it was like a five thousand dollar rehab. But what when we got into it and really got to doing the rehab, we learned that oh, it was it was going to be a, a lot more than that. Um, and the reason being is because it had foundation issues. One of the things that we would recommend is do after you get a house, um, do an initial clean, do a, a light cleaning inside, and then make sure you rake up all the leaves around on the outside. And what we discovered when we raked the leaves out is there was actually a gap between the foundation and the ground, and there was a hole under the house. So we had to, that was an additional cost that had to get filled in, and then. Um, the plumbing. And then the plumbing was old, so we had to redo the plumbing. It was original plumbing, it was um, galvanized. Mm -hmm. So that was another additional cost that we had to, to rip out. So, I mean, not, not too many big surprises, but we did learn a lot. Mm -hmm. I think the soft clean before we got started, um, and, and we didn't take enough pictures of the before. <laughs> well, before, just, yeah. just like Swarov, you guys got excited about the deal, and you and you sort of forgot about the picture. Yeah, so, yeah. The backyard, the for, the photo that was shown, the backyard actually had a, a pergola, I guess you call it, like right against the house, and they uh, Longhorn took that down because it was it, right against the fascia board, which had kind of rotted those boards right against the house. So that would have been a good before and after, but we're learning. <laughs> And so how quickly did this rent out? It almost, I mean, we, the rehab was a month, less than a month. I mean, again, Longhorn was incredible and they were, yeah. they worked with us, totally worked with us. Um, and then, um, I mean, as soon as we put it on a coming soon with the realtor, it was rented. Uh, it, I think within a week. Within a week. So you used a realtor too to market the property? We did. We, we did. We were a little bit nervous initially. Um, kind of did what they did, um, just had an expert kind of walk us through it this time, get our feet wet before we try it ourselves. <laughs> so do you, do you recall how, how many days it was between the time the rehab was over to the time they moved in? Uh, maybe a week, two weeks tops. It wasn't. Not even two weeks. I, I believe it was a yeah, week. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'm not surprised, week. but. We knew they were winding down, you know, with the work. We had the coming soon sign put up and kind of had a, you know, be ready, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Right. So the so marketing definitely worked. worked very, very quickly. And, and awesome. An interesting story on that was that when we put it on the market, literally that day, the husband and wife were renting from us. Um, she had been looking and looking in Kingwood. And then he, he said, well, let me try. So he pulls up. H-A-R, and he says, look, it's right here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I mean, literally the day we put it up there is the day he found it, and they couldn't wow. see it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. So let's let's go ahead and, uh, so anybody want to call out? And, uh, your yeah, husband? Jeff is awesome to work with. We enjoyed mm -hmm. working with him. He was, I mean, steadfast and true and got through there. And then Longhorn Home Solutions, we can't say enough good things about um, Brandon and Emilio. Yeah, it's an uncle yeah. and, and nephew, and they they just worked hard, and they 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 got us over the finish line. Uh, and it was a total team effort with them. And then of course you, Doug. We appreciate your input. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Remember to write those reviews too on the vendor on the vendor program. So, oh yeah. 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 All right. So how how is uh how has it changed your life? How's your perspective changed? We might be able to retire. <laughs> <laughs> how's, it, how's it feel to to see a checking account and actually see money show up in a checking account as opposed yeah. to always you know, buying out? Yeah. It, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, and and it's it's changed my life in the sense that you know I, I went through I guess a lot like David you know got a finance degree did the normal things and then kind of realized that you know all that's turned mm -hmm. on its head when you get into into something that is well real estate and it makes more sense when you start looking at the numbers yeah and and just you know as looking for a second career for me you know when you look at working eight to five versus um doing this and applying those hours to becoming a real estate professional or just being involved in this and being able to manage 
my own time or our time in hopes that too at some point he can retire from his eight to five and join in that's that's kind of our goal mm -hmm. flexibility and um, legacy for our family yeah Got it. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead in the interest of time let's go ahead and uh, talk about what's next and uh, then answer some questions yeah uh, so i mean yes we joined before the pandemic and during the pandemic i had back surgery my son had surgery so we were we slowed down on purchasing but our goal is, is to get at least two more family single properties and, and we're hunting hard now and looking on the blasts. Um, but our ultimate goal is to transition to the multifamily side. Just follow the, follow the map, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Follow yes. the print. Yeah, we, we had a slow start just because of unexpected surgeries, but we're, we're hoping to get ramped up here and get going again. Right. Sometimes you just have to roll with it and- uh, Yeah. Get, right. Awesome. So Emily, do we have any questions from the audience on this? We do, actually. So thanks for asking. Thanks for checking in. Um, yeah, we've got a few. I've got a, a real good question here from Kirby. He said, how were you able to overcome any fear you had of investing in real estate? Doug, <laughs> really yeah. tough meeting with our mentor. Yeah. yeah. It's because we we were watching the blasts, you know, and and that's that's one of the things is that that fear and trepidation and jumping in. But when we saw this one come up right. on Kinglewood, I mean, we reached out to Doug and said, "This is interesting. We think we're going to jump on it." And then, you know, once we did, you know, having a mentor walk with us was uh, priceless, truly priceless. Because, you know, like Doug said, we had no real estate experience, so having someone to say, "Well, what do you think about this?" And, should we take care of this? Like, you know, the galvanized pipes, talking to some of the contractors, they're like, ah, it's lasted this long, don't worry about it. And Doug's like, look, the model says, make it like new so you don't have to worry about it and it doesn't become a headache. So, you know, Doug was, that was just what got us over that fear. It didn't get us over the fear and trepidation, but it helped us take that first step and just do it. Yes, I mean, Lifestyles offers so many resources and people, you know, just like Doug and, just so many different the vendors to help and you know in traditional avenues of retirement are not working really the only failure we felt like was would be not to try it all so that kind of that helped us but definitely all the resources available to us was was a comfort and a cushion you know we felt like yeah that, that's awesome yeah i'm i'm glad we have mentors like like doug and david here too because they've helped me a lot as well so well hey here's here's another question from Biba, uh and they were asking how much did you guys invest in the first property or um i guess to put it another way how much cash cash did you guys start with to invest so we we took advantage of the the changes in the tax code and pulled money out of the 401k um cool. well actually out of the iras and converted them into investment um, fun. So we had about, I would say, 70 grand to start and work with. So that first deal, as you saw, you know, the average is about 30 grand. So that's the first one. Um, but they do, again, there are resources online that teach you how to, to get 10 houses in 10 months with, you know, using your other houses as collateral. So, um, nice. so we're on our way. Nice. So how many properties do you, in total, do you own now? We've got two. We've got the Sandy House, and we've got one that's a work in progress that we're getting ready. So yeah, nice. Congratulations. Trying to, trying to wrap up now that everybody's recovered. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. We, uh, all right. And Tom was asking, since it's an investment property, did you have any issues getting it refinanced? No, no. The again, they teach. Lifestyles teaches you how to go from hard money to, you know, refinancing and they walk you through that and what to look for what and how to get out. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, so Chuck is really also asking. To chime in on that one. Okay. Obviously, you haven't been to my seminar before. Come to my seminar. It's actually easier for them to qualify for this rental house than to buy a house to live in. Because mm -hmm. in your house you live in, your debt to income ratio goes against your income. But in a rental house, they're counting 75% of the rents, so therefore it's net neutral. 
but I'll explain that in the seminar. Great yeah. question. I just want to make sure they understand. Yeah. People are always afraid it's actually easier to qualify for these than the house you lived in. Mm -hmm. okay? Very true. Very true. Um, so Chuck was asking about the financing as well. This is, he seems to be a thing tonight. So, um, and I'm not sure if he's asking about hard money or conventional. So maybe just just a little bit on both. Um, but he was asking how it was financed and what's the interest rate or what was the interest rate? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. So um, the market that you'll come to find out is is moving quick. Um, so if you cannot jump on a on a deal quickly and close quickly, you're going to lose. It. Um, and so if you know we and lifestyles are competing with folks that want to purchase a house, mm -hmm. so that takes about 30 days to close. Whereas with hard money, it takes seven to ten days. Um, but you will pay for that. Um, yeah, you're going to pay for that. So it's about 6.99 percent plus mm -hmm. there's an initial the front fee that they charge, um, and that's why you'll see why you saw in our numbers that it was like 11 grand in closing costs because yeah. we had to pay the hard money lender, and then when we refinance, we had to pay the new lender. And so you're paying twice for closing. You close twice, but you have a house at the end of it with a rental income. Um, and that's, and the numbers work. When the numbers work, it makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and to just uh, go on that, so you turned that $34,000 that was sitting in the bank into $54,000 in equity in the property, you know, right. along the way. So uh, it all works. Yeah. And guys, just so you know, we have many different lenders, there's many different interest rates. You know, what might be the answer for Dean might not be the answer for you. People are paying 3% interest, people are paying 4% interest. There's lots of different programs. Every different deal is different. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Interest rates is going to vary on the individual credit score and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay.